All of you know how much I love fun bad movies. To date, Moonfall is still the most entertaining film I've ever seen because it is a beautiful disaster of a movie. Hundred million dollar budget and not a single thing about it is even close to being good. It's amazing for all the wrong reasons and it is one of the most entertaining films ever constructed by our species. So I have a huge passion for fun bad films, so I was very excited to see Meg 2 today because I watched the first Meg, it's nothing special, but it's enjoyable and it's very silly and it's, of course, a bit stinky. It's a movie about Jason Statham hunting down a megalodon shark, so of course it's going to be a bit goofy. And Meg 2 was rolling around and I expected it'd be a lot of the same. Some stinkiness, some silliness, put him in a pot and create a wonderful stew out of it and put a smile on Charles's face. And to a certain extent, it did. But it's also legitimately one of the stupidest movies I've watched in quite some time, and in a lot of ways, it's dumber than Moonfall. And I don't say that lightly. To say something is stupider than Moonfall is a bold claim that you need empirical evidence to back up. That, that's a claim that's bordering on insanity to say out loud. But I, I mean it, and I'll prove it here when I break down Meg 2 for you. So, of course, there's going to be spoilers here. I'm just going to rip the band-aid off right now. I don't think you're really going to watch Meg 2 for the story. I don't think anyone's going to this film for the narrative, you know. No one's watching porn for the plot, and no one's watching Meg 2 for the character relationship and the overarching plot. A plot that is so fucking simple, I legitimately think Ed from Ed, Ed, and Eddie made it after eating five slabs of buttered toast. It is baffling that this actually even made it into the film. It should have just been a montage of shark carnage and Jason Statham going, what's up, chum, and then kicking people into the shark. That's an actual line from the movie, by the way. Like, it would have been better if that's the direction they went. But unfortunately, the biggest sin this movie commits is it is boring for about 80% of it. 80% of this movie isn't spent on megalodons or action or characters fighting against megalodons. For some reason, they made the first 80% a fucking soulless, garbage, poorly written, embarrassing, corporate corruption conspiracy mystery movie. And that's using a very generous term for it, because calling this a mystery in the first 80% is an insult to the English language. It's more like a pistory, because it belongs in a toilet. So, the first 80% is dedicated to explaining the world now. There's a very expensive expedition group that's led by Jason Statham, and they do these deep dives into, these trench, into a trench that has these megalodons roaming around, and they're separated from the rest of the ocean thanks to this barrier that they can't cross. There's a very strong jutsu, and the megalodons aren't allowed to either enter or exit, but... This team that Jason Statham is a part of is financially backed by tons and tons of doubloons. So many clams. They have so much money. They have a lot of very powerful people uh, financing it. And they also have a megalodon in captivity that they're training and raising like a pet to understand a bit more about megalodons as a whole. Now, the team is about to go on a routine dive. They've done, I think, 26 successful missions or something like that. And this was supposed to be just another standard trip, but things went a bit awry. Now, there's another passenger aboard this ship, this giant, you know, complex. And it's a child that Jason Statham is raising and teaching, and she's a genius. She's a 14-year-old super genius, you know, fucking Jimmy Neutron level intellect. And she sneaks aboard the expedition vehicle with Jason Statham and the team. Which he's very upset about. He's like, this is very not good. I'm very disappointed that you've done this. We're, we're turning this ship around. But then they're like, no, we'll just press forward. And so they do. He didn't take a whole lot to convince them. But while they're doing that, that megalodon they have in captivity breaks out. And do you want to know how it breaks out? Well, because there was like a single metal grate. Like a single metal cheese grater that was supposed to stop a fucking megalodon. An absolute monster. So it just easily breaks through with literally no effort, and we're supposed to be shocked that it did this. I don't understand how, because it was basically just a single piece of construction paper that separated the Megalodon from the rest of the world. So that right there was already extremely lazy to me. They could have had some kind of cool plot, like showcasing the Megalodon being really smart, like, 
you know, the Megalodon set a trap, it played dead, it went belly up. So when they went in there to check on the Megalodon's heartbeat, it fucking mauled them all and then escaped. It, maybe it grew wings and flew away, I don't know, just anything besides it went through a basically open tunnel that we didn't think about. So, as they're going on this dive, the Megalodon that they had in captivity starts chasing them and they're like, How is that possible? We've got to dive deeper, it's the only way to escape it. So they dive deeper, then they eventually go into the very deepest part of the trenches, and they're speculating on if they should just abandon the mission because this is already not going according to plan. So Jason Statham's like, should really abort mission. And even the main, you know, base is like, yeah, probably a good idea. This is already totally off book here. Let's just get the fuck out. But the actual owner of the company, the whole enterprise is like, no, this is a really good opportunity to explore. We're explorers, god damn it, this is what we do. And our Megalodon came down here because she wants to mate. It's mating season for Megalodons, and I'm fucking horny. We're gonna go watch. And they're like, well, if I mean, if you say so, shucks. So, they continue to go deeper into the trenches, and then they stumble upon an underwater base. And I shit you not, for about... 10 minutes, I really thought they were about to bring Atlantis into this. They were like, oh my god, there's an underwater base here. This is so weird. There's, wait, I'm getting heat signatures. There's, there's living creatures on that base. And I was like, oh my god, they're, they're going to do Atlanteans here. Oh, oh, this is going to be incredible. But they don't. It turns out there was a different company, a shadow organization that had the same access to the technology they did. And they had this underground base that this team of good guys, the explorers, stumbled upon. And this is where the corporate conspiracy starts to unfold. They start wondering, how is that possible? We're 25,000 feet deep. No one has access to this kind of shit except us. What's going on here? There's fishy business and I'm not liking the smell. So then we get to go into one of the bad guy's submersibles and he's like, oh, they stumbled upon us. There's only one option. And then the guys, there's like a team of three and two of the guys are in these like underwater, you know, fucking Gundam suits. And they're like mining away at barnacles. And they're like, no, don't do it. Wait, wait, no, don't do it. He's like, I've got to do it. They've seen us. I'm like, no, please don't. And he just blows everything up, including himself. He, he doesn't die from it. Spoilers. But he blows everything up in the trenches, which blows up the, the barrier like the, you know, the Ginjutsu that keeps all of the Megalodons in the trenches. So he blows that shit up. He blows up the heroes, submarines and everything. And then they're in a big scramble because they can't escape now because their submarines are fried. So they get into these high pressure suits and they start making the walk on foot from the crash site of the explosion all the way to that base that they identified. Now, just to put you in the right headspace here, it's a fucking snooze fest. And it's already been like 30 or 35 minutes by this point, so it's a slow burn. Meg 2 puts the Megalodons in the backseat. It puts them as, like, sidekicks. Like, they, they have cameos in this movie, basically. Because they spend the first 80% with this garbage here. It's so fucking boring. But anyway, the explorers with Jason Statham and the, the child and everyone else get in touch with the main base, like, hey... We're going to need that rescue submarine. Shit went tits up down here and we, we need a little help. You know, this, this, this one lunatic blew us to kingdom come, you know, blew us to high heavens. Our submarines don't work anymore. Come get us. And they're like, we're on it. Actually, scratch that. We can't. Somebody sabotaged our rescue sub. And now you can see all of the complex narrative plot devices coming into play. So then they have to figure out who sabotaged it. So naturally, they check the su surveillance cameras. But it turns out our culprit was smart enough to turn off all of the surveillance cameras. But what they didn't realize is they had built in a fail-safe security camera system. So they go and check that. And it's revealed that our man on the inside, our evil person on the good guy's team is a girl named Jess, and she's evil because she wants money. She says that she's doing it because she wants more money than she could ever possibly care about, where money loses all meaning to her. So, it turns out what they were doing down there on that base is they were mining rare earth minerals. And I shit you not, when they go into the, the, the base, one of the main guys is like, what is this? And he's like, oh wait, this is rare earth minerals. He literally says it's rare earth minerals. And it's like, they're probably using this for superconductors, which is good for quantum computation devices as well as all kinds of transportation. This is very important stuff. 
no doubt this one crystal I'm holding in my hand is worth one billion dollars. And Jason Statham's like, billion? With a B? Like, I think I'm actually quoting this verbatim. I'm pretty sure I've got this right on the money if you check the script. And he's like, yes, with a B. And then that's when Jess is like, billions of dollars are at stake here. And then it gets even bigger because it turns out Jess isn't the only person working on the inside. The main girl who's financing all of this, the big CEO super powerhouse who gave a speech in the very beginning of the movie about how proud she is of this company, she is the one who's pulling all of the strings. She's the puppet master and everyone else is just the marionette on the strings dancing for her. And she's like, why aren't they dead yet? What's going on? So, I want to pause real quick because I'm, I'm probably overstimulating your brains right now. I want to point out a huge plot hole that I can't believe no one on the team recognized. The way that this is conveyed is that this is all part of the plan. What they wanted to do is kill everybody on board that main base, or rather, they wanted to kill everyone on board those subs. That was the plan from the get-go, I believe, unless I missed a crucial detail. But even Jess, who was one of the core team members, advised that they pull out of the mission when the child was on board the submarine. She's like, okay, yeah, things are a little off course, should probably pull out. So if their plan was to kill them, why would she advise that? Plus, there was no plan in place. The only reason this went so wrong is because the Megalodon unexpectedly broke out. None of this was planned or orchestrated. And the only reason there was ever an explosion in the trenches is because they accidentally stumbled upon that secret base and mining operation because they were trying to watch some sharks fuck. Like, all of it was pure happenstance. None of this was planned, and yet every step of the way, that evil lady CEO's like, you know, why aren't they dead yet? We've talked about this. You sabotaged the rescue vehicle, did you not? How could they still be alive? <laughs> As if it was all part of the plan. Even though there was clearly no fucking plan. The whole plot falls apart, like, if you think about it for more than three seconds. And another thing, why the fuck would the owner of the company that has the access to, te to the technology is actively doing dives and everything, why would they even bother having a separate shady organization that's doing the same thing but then collecting rare earth minerals. Like, they're making billions of dollars off the rare earth minerals, but they could also still be doing that with the explorer team. They could just say like, hey, we're also gonna send a mining team down with you. Like, I, I don't think anyone would care. This is a completely separate from the rest of the world region where they're just mining rare earth minerals no one else has ever seen or had access to before. The explorer team would actually probably be pretty excited about that because it's more information and more knowledge for them. Like, they get to take in these things and learn about them. So I don't even understand the nefarious need to have, like, an evil group alongside your normal group. You could have just merged them together without any of the evilness. You could have just been like, alright, and now bring me back some fucking barnacles. They're super barnacles. Those are turbocharged magic barnacles. So let's just get a few of those and we can sell them and continue to finance these expeditions. And I don't think anyone would bat an eye. Like, it's... I don't understand what the conflict even was to even have them as a group in this movie in the first place. There's a single throwaway line that I think is what they tried to get across, and it's from Jason Statham. He said that you're doing this for money. So I guess that's what made it inherently bad and needed to be split away from the expedition group, even though all of their expeditions are also for money. Like, they were also a profit-driven organization, too. So it was like a really weird dynamic there. And then there was one line from the evil CEO who said, we can destroy the planet from underneath the, the trench and no one would ever know. We'll destroy all of it and sell it all for billions of dollars, is basically what her monologue said. And it's like, okay, but also we never had access to that before. So you're right, no one would know, and you're not really destroying the planet. They were literally chipping away some of the, like, crystals on the side of things. They weren't... It wasn't, like, deforestation underwater. It was, like, actually a very small-scale operation with only, like, a handful of crystals. Like, it wasn't that big of a deal, really. So they did a horrible job of showcasing why the bad guys are doing what they're doing in the first place. So now let's get back to the plot. So they're walking from their destroyed submarines and their high-pressure Power Ranger suits to go to their base that they found and then take escape pods to get to the surface. And along the way, things get messy. There's, like, some deep-sea creatures with some sharp teeth that start biting them. So our, our people start shooting back with their spear guns. One guy gets abducted by a giant squid and he dies. You don't see it. It's all off-screen. 
another girl gets eaten by a shark, a megalodon. You don't see it. This is a PG-13 movie, so they don't show any of like the carnage or anything. So pretty much every death in this movie is either off screen or cut away from right away, which doesn't make any sense for a fucking movie about sharks killing people and killing sharks in return. Such a, such a, such a huge blunder. I understand why it's PG-13 because it's more profitable to do that because it's more accessible to people, but it still takes all of the wind out of the sails of every single action moment of which there is very few in this movie. So they're going on this, you know, journey from their subs, the base. They lose everyone along the way, except for four people. Of course, the main four, Jason Statham, the kid, the main guy behind the operation, and then another girl who was a big part of the team. So they make it to the base. Then that guy who blew everyone up, cements himself as like the primary antagonist who's going to keep clashing with Jason Statham. So they end up fighting on this base. Jess reveals herself to be the person on the inside who's pulling on the strings. She traps them in that base and tries to drown them. But Jason Statham swims, I, I shit you not, swims with no gear from the place where they were drowning outside of the base to hit the emergency override button and save everyone. He is swimming with no gear at 25,000 feet. Nothing, very few things rather, can fucking survive at 25,000 feet under the sea. And at the very bottom of the list of things that could maybe survive, humans are there. Humans cannot. Fucking everything blows up under that immense pressure. We have never even seen something that deep. And yet, Jason Statham, powered by testosterone and a deep voice, is able to just man-mode it and fucking swim like a goddamn angelic mermaid. Just Olympic swim at 25,000 feet deep to save the crew. And they try and give an explanation for it, but I swear to God, I, I had to wiggle my finger and say, no way, that's horseradish. No shot. Their explanation was something like, as long as he inhales enough water into his sinuses, it will equalize his internal pressure to resist the water pressure and he'll be able to be just fine. I don't have a degree in marine biology, but there's no fucking way, right? Like, there's no way you could inhale enough water into your sinuses to somehow resist the pressure at 25,000 feet deep. There's just, there's just no fucking shot, right? Like, I... I just don't think so. But anyway, he does. He saves everyone. He then fights the main bad guy again down there, who, for some reason, lets Jason Statham live. Jason Statham passed out after saving everyone, and the main bad guy saves him, and he's like, I was in jail for two years because of you. I've been waiting for this moment to kill you. And it's like, brother, you, you could have just let him die in front of you. Like, I'm sure that probably would have been fulfilling for your revenge arc. Or, you know, if you wanted to be more hands-on, you could have, like, stabbed him while he was still passed out. But instead, he, like, wakes him up, and then challenges him to some fisticuffs, like, it's time to get pugilistic. Only he immediately cheats by bringing out a knife. So if you weren't gonna actually, like, throw down with honor, why not just let him die? It doesn't make any sense, but anyway. They have, like, a really lame fight against each other, which, of course, Jason Statham wins. They then get into a backup submarine and escape to the surface. And in the meantime, the main base is being raided by the CEO's cleanup squad, who's come... Like, a, like they're a military group who's come to kill everybody so they can keep the secret that they're mining earth, rare earth minerals in the trenches. But because of that explosion kind of poking a hole in that, you know, protective barrier over the trench, three megalodons and the kraken escape. A giant squid, basically the kraken escapes to these three megalodons and like, uh-oh, we've got a problem. But it's not that big of a problem. So instead, the military just keeps, like, shooting people and taking over the main base. And then there's two main people there that escape that are friends of Jason Statham. One of them's very cool. His name's DJ. He's got, like, a fucking desert eagle, and he's got, like, pepper spray and a taser. And he's really cool. I think he's probably my favorite character in the movie. So he has some cool moments where he unleashes some martial arts, and he starts shooting his desert eagle. Like, it's fun watching him. And this whole sequence is kind of enjoyable because finally it's snapping out of this tedious corporate conspiracy narrative that they were trying to drive home. Now we're just getting into some fun action. We have some megalodons that are now finally starting to do something like eat people. We have the Kraken who's on the loose now. So finally, you know, like an hour and 10 minutes into the movie, we're getting something entertaining. So anyway, I'm just going to press fast forward real quick here. Basically... All of the good guys escape the marine ba or the main base. Uh, the marines are still chasing them, and Jess, the woman on the inside, turns out was the lover of the bad guy in the deep sea. 
So he comes back, he gives her a kiss, and then the main evil CEO calls Jess, and she's like, Jess, we're going to need to give you a promotion. We're going to make you a hero here because the public's going to hear about this somehow. I, I don't know how, but they're like, we need to make you the hero here, Jess, so we're going to write you a story about how you saved everyone and saved the world and saved the planet. And Jess is like, that sounds great. And then she gets eaten by a megalodon who comes through the glass and kills her right in front of her boyfriend. And her boyfriend runs away. He's like, oh no, no, no. So that's how they get Jess out of there. She was a, a very important person in everything going wrong. And she probably only had like four scenes in total in the entire movie for maybe like three minutes of screen time. And they killed her off in a really quick, comical way. That was self-aware though. I'm very certain that was an on-purpose gag to kill her like that. So I don't have a problem with that. But anyway, now we're, we're getting off the main base. We're towards the end of the movie. So the good guys are in a little boat and they're going towards something called Fun Island. Didn't put any real effort into this, clearly. This movie really feels like it's the first product of the writer's strike. <laughs> like, this had to have just been written by people on their off time during lunch that weren't on strike. Like, there's no way an actual team of writers wrote this one. I really don't think so. Or if they did, they intentionally made it as unappealing to everybody as possible. Because up until this point, it is a snooze fest. And they fucking called this place Fun Island. Didn't even bother to give it a name. So they're approaching Fun Island, like, everyone get out of the water! There's fucking megalodons coming and it's a giant squid! And they're like, oh, it's a load of hooey! You're stupid, we're vacationing, It's we're having fun, we're not getting out of the water. And then all of the bad guys arrive to Fun Island as well, because they all deduced that it was going to Fun Island, so they, they go the, to Fun Island. And for some reason... The fucking evil CEO flies in on a helicopter to the island as well. The central point of the conflict with all of the fucking prehistoric killing machines and all of the gunfights against the good and bad guys. For some reason, the evil CEO, who is totally safe and comfortable at her penthouse suite, flies here and just sits in the helicopter. She just wanted to be boots on the ground, like feel like she was part of the team, you know, part of the crew, part of the ship type shit. So she flies there in a fucking helicopter just to sit there and whine. Why? Why? Like, it doesn't even make sense in the context of the narrative. She has no reason to be there, but she goes out of her way to be there. And she's there like this, too. She basically fucking teleports there. Like, I don't know how she got there so quick. But she's there, and then she immediately dies. Because also escaping from the trench wasn't just Megalodons and the Kraken. It was like turtle monster... Not turtle monsters... Lizard monsters, so there are these like four-legged little lizards with big teeth that crawl around and they bite and kill her. They drag her away. So she does nothing. She flies to the island just to sit in the helicopter and die. But not before she has like five other horrible scenes where she's in the helicopter and she hears a noise and she says to the pilot, she's like, Jenkins, go check on that. And it's like, lady, open your eyes. So, like, he turns off the helicopter, and he goes out there, and he, he dies uh, eventually. But it zooms out from the helicopter, and there is a dead body right next to the helicopter, right next to the evil CEO. That somehow she didn't see? Like, she didn't know? And she's like, Jenkins, I, I don't know what that was. Go, go check on it. And it's like, if she just looked to her left, she would have seen a dead body. And how the fuck did someone die there without her knowing about it? Who was it? S Sam Fisher on a stealth mission killed this guy? Like, it, it makes no sense. It doesn't make sense. It really doesn't. And it's it's not just that body either. There was another body as well right next next to the helicopter. So multiple people died around her and she didn't know? Was she asleep? Is she lobotomized? Like, what the fuck? And then eventually she gets ambushed. Ambushed is the wrong word because the thing literally just slowly crawls up to her, jumps in the helicopter, and drags her away. And we never see her again, so she's presumed dead. So she had nothing to contribute to this fucking movie at all. The entire corporate conspiracy plotline has no real conclusion to it. It's all such trash. It's such trash. I'm kind of jumping all over the place now because the movie itself jumps all over the place. It becomes like an actual fever dream. So trying to remember anything from this film is a, is a Herculean task. So the good guys are on the beach. Uh, they see the Megalodons coming, and the Megalodon starts eating people, starts killing people. The giant squid brings down an entire ship and starts, you know, strangling people and killing them, drowning them, eating them. 
And I shit you not, two of the good guys go off on their own side quest, like, into the jungle. Because there's, like, a jungle on the beach there. So they go off into the jungle. And Jason Statham and uh, another good guy and the child are still on the beach coming up with a plan. And for some fucking reason, Jason Statham tells the child to go to the lifeguard tower. Which overlooks the water! You know, the place with the three megalodons and the giant, the giant squid that we're trying to escape from? He tells her to basically go into the fucking water. I'm surprised he didn't tell her to get on the surfboard and, like, start shredding some waves to have a little fun to take her mind off the stress. Like, what is that plan? Like, just tell her to go into the jungle! Like, the only thing that I can maybe try and rationalize here is I'm giving so such a charitable fucking <laughs> goodie bag to the team here, is that maybe Jason Statham thought it'd be more dangerous for her in the jungle because there were some gunshots from the bad guys fighting the lizard monsters. But even still, it's significantly lower odds of getting shot out in that jungle, which is a huge jungle, than it is putting her over the water with the megalodons and shit. But anyway... He basically just sends her to her death like as a prank. She doesn't die, spoiler. But he sends her to the most dangerous place possible. Meanwhile, he himself made little spears with bombs on them, which is something that we've seen him do before. And his plan is he's going to start throwing the spears with bombs on them at the Megalodons and he's going to save the day and be the big fucking hero. So the side quest that two of the people go on is to find the helicopter. They find the helicopter, no problem, lickety-split. And then they say, it's out of fuel. How could it possibly be out of fuel? They just landed that bitch. It has been fucking planted on the ground and nothing else. How is it out of fuel? Did it just barely make the trip here? Did, did the lizard monsters, like, siphon the gas out of it because they're addicted to the gas? Like, how is it out of fuel? So then there's an intense moment where they're like scrambling to get the fuel hose, which is right next to the helicopter, conveniently. And they're like, all right, fuel, fill it up. And then the lizard monsters are like charging them. It's like, no, oh, our precious nectar. We need the fuel. It tastes so good. So the lizard monsters are crawling after him. He starts spraying them with the gas. And they're like, ooh. So he's like holding them off with that. And then he fills the chopper in between, sprays them. And he's filling the chopper. And then they get on the chopper, and then one of the guys throws a match and blows up the lizards, and they fly the chopper away for literally three seconds before he immediately crashes. <laughs> so, chopper crashes, one guy jumps out, one guy stays in, and you think he's dead, but he's not, because the helicopter, like, basically fucking explodes. The helicopter literally, like, fucking explodes. So you're like, oh, man, that guy died. Rest in peace, man. Godspeed. What a fucking patriot. But no, he's not dead. Like, somehow, somehow he survived it. So he's just, like, hanging out in there. So the guy who jumps off is like, I need to save him now. So he, like, swims over there. And he saves him, no problem. But anyway, I, I, let, let's just get... I'll just finish up. I've been going on for so fucking long here. This is like an actual moonfall incident here trying to explain this absolutely dis, <laughs> disgusting, degenerate plot. So Jason Statham is throwing spears at the sharks, and this is when the movie is finally good. Watching the sharks actually kill people, well, as much as they show, which isn't much of anything, is enjoyable. It's fun. You know, shove popcorn in your face, turn your brain off, and just enjoy the, the silliness of it. It's fun. Jason Statham fighting the Megalodons is fucking great. Him throwing these homemade spears with bombs on him is really cool. Blows the brains off of one of them after riding a gnarly ass wave. So Megalodon jumps up and misses him, slams down, creates a huge splash, which creates a huge wave, which Jason Statham fucking Tony Hawk ramps off of, throws a spear down beneath him, blows the brain off of one of the Megalodons, bang, checkmate. Then Jason Statham crashes his jet ski. Oh, I forgot to mention he's on a jet ski, by the way. Actually, that's a very important part. I don't know what you were picturing without me saying jet ski, but yeah, he's on a jet ski. He's not, like, running on the water, you know. He's, he's on a vehicle. But he crashes, and then he's on the dock, and then the bad guy is there as well. And the bad guy's got a light machine gun, and he's, like, shooting at him, and Jason Statham gets the edge, he stabs him in the leg, he takes his gun, and this is where we get our really cool one-liner moment. The bad guy's like, You've got your gun. Are you going to shoot me? And he's like, don't need it. So Jason Statham drops the gun, which is so fucking dumb, by the way, because these are just sharks. You can shoot them and it will hurt them. That gun would be invaluable as a resource to have. Having that gun would be so fucking helpful to protecting that child you care so much about and everyone else on the beach that you seem to care a lot about. But for some reason, he's like, yep, don't need it. 
I also forgot to mention that the child who went to the lifeguard tower for some reason decides that she wanted to try and save one person in particular, so she gets on a surfboard and swims out to her because she was drowning, and then she, like, leads her to the shore. So, that was, like, a tense moment because, like, oh, is the Megalodon going to kill the kid? No. No, didn't happen, but just wanted to point that out. So he drops the gun, the bad guy's like, I knew you were too soft to shoot me, and it turns out this sneaky bad guy had another gun in his belt pocket er, holster. So he rips it out, and as he's going for it, Jason Statham kicks him into the mouth of a Megalodon who's going by who eats him. And Jason Statham's one-liner is, See you later, chum. So that was awesome. Yeah, and then uh, I'll just go ahead and wrap up the, the synopsis here. Jason Statham starts banging a helicopter blade against the surface of the water to get the attention of the Megalodon to get him away from his friends. The Megalodon charges him. The Megalodon jumps up about to eat Jason Statham, but Jason Statham drops back, points the helicopter blade straight up, and impales the Megalodon, killing it. Now, astute observers will have... Well, not observers. Astute listeners will have heard me mention that there were three Megalodons and a giant squid. So what happened to the other Megalodon and the giant squid? Well... That third megalodon ate the giant squid, mauled it, because it wanted to. So that's how the giant squid dies. And then the third megalodon is actually the one that escaped from captivity that they were trying to train. So the main trainer had his, like, clicking tool, and he gave it clicks to try and let the megalodon know, hey, it's me, we're buddies, we're, we're pals. And the Megalodon's like, ooh, geez, pardon me, you're right, I, I didn't recognize you, you know, out here in the water like this. But I'll be on my way now. So after a couple clicks, the Megalodon just swims past them and then leaves. That's where the movie ends. So, yeah, that was Meg 2. It was a fun bad movie at the end, but everything before it was insufferably boring bad. So I didn't, I didn't love it, basically. But yeah, yeah you know, probably the stupidest movie I've seen in a while. Definitely up there. But I do like the last, like, 20 or 30 or so minutes. Because finally, it's what the movie should be. Fucking silly action with sharks and a giant squid. It's fun. So, yep, that's about it. See ya.